We are charting the higher octave, and this time again, to welcome him back on the show is the ever so amazing Michael Cervolo, the founder of Beauty and Chaos. This is your third time, I guess, on the show. I'm always so happy, happy to have you, Michael. Thank you. Always a, a pleasure, and I appreciate you. Uh, I mean, you were one of the first, and uh, certainly appreciate the support and everything and friendship, and I know you've had people that have been uh, part of our big family on also, and I, I yeah. appreciate that too. This is, this is your fourth album now, right? It's called Dancing with Angels. Yes. And we, if we go back in time, I'm just looking at all the, you know, I have all these albums, right? And I did the interviews and I, I know the songs, Finding Beauty and Chaos was the first one. Yes. The Storm Before the Calm. And then Behind the Veil, which is an all-female album. Just another yes. one. And we've done, uh, and we're kind of repeating that, uh, our little uh, procedure. In between each one of those, we did the Re-Envision albums. That's right. And, uh, where actually Michael and I and a, a whole host of really great producers, artists, remixes are at, we're actually at work actually doing that again. That oh, hopefully okay. about by the end of the year, if not the, the first uh, early part of January. So I, I enjoy that process too. You know, one of my favorite songs that you know, and I don't, I don't know if I mentioned this to you before, is, is the long goodbye. You know, the the of yeah. version. Yeah, that okay. that's so beautiful. It, uh, and that's we had like a beauty re revision album, right? Yeah, we had a party here a couple of like two weeks ago, kind of a or a little be early uh, album releasing, and just had some friends over, and uh, we just had the Beauty and Chaos video channel playing, and I'd happened to walk in back into the house for uh, to grab a drink or something, and that video came on, and oh, I just like. Video. I hadn't heard it for a while, but just in the other room, listening to how how great Wayne's voice mm -hmm. sounded. And I mean, I do love the electric version, but something yeah. just even seemed to translate with that song even better. And I'm really hoping, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing him, and I, I hope he finds the time to do a version of uh, yeah. Diamond Pearls. In oh. either with acoustic guitar or in his piano or something to give it that strip down. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, oh my God, it'd be so beautiful. I mean, I love the remix albums because they do have the the kind of upbeat dance floor stuff and kind of industrial, and then some of them are even EDM. But the ones that really, uh, I really love are like I love the the acoustic version of Storm. I just thought, you know, yeah, if the song, if it's a good song. It's a good song on a simple instrument. And uh, I think Diving for Pearls falls into that. So hopefully he finds the time in between the mission tours and everything to do that. Yeah. So Beauty and Chaos formed in 2018. You and Grammy-nominated producer Michael Rosan, you've been working with for so long. Yes. And you guys are yeah. just a great team. And you you build this family, and I I think I'm part of the family too because oh, you know, oh, most I feel, definitely I, I feel like I've been with, with with you know since the beginning, and I've always connected to your music. Every, every time I hear the album that come when, it, when the first time I I hear it, I'm like wow, I'm so blown away. You really have that <laughs> with your guitar, and uh, just just the whole create creative process. You know, just the name of your of your of your project, beauty. It really is beautiful. You know. So, it certainly has some chaos in it too, but yeah, well, yeah I, I, I appreciate that. I mean, that. Beauty, beauty can't be without chaos, right? No. And each person's <laughs> beauty and chaos could be a different thing. And I think there are lines that it actually is one in the same. But I think I counted, uh, I was trying to come up with a number. And I think if my math was correct, that after this album, we've had 25 different singers, not that's including the ones that have done multiple, but 25 unique singers yeah. and uh you know and i do consider you part of the family that's been this group of people uh you know i want to name some but if i forget someone i'm gonna feel real bad that kind of got it from the beginning and i think we are all sort of old souls old school that that kind of look at music and listen to music in a different way than kind of today's generation does i don't think we look at it as being background or disposable mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. i think it's still important to us and uh i think at this point uh 
Michael and I are just thrilled. We still have fun doing this. And oh. I think we've made, again, a really honest record that's not trying to be anything. We're not trying to follow a trend or, hey, what if we do this? Maybe more people will like it. It's just we put it on, we smile, we have a glass of wine or several, and we laugh, <laughs> we cut up. And it's just, I mean, that's I, I, at this point in my life, uh, I don't even want to say career, but just it, that's what's important, to have a good time doing it. Yeah. And I really enjoy finding these new singers uh, that do take this music and turn it into songs. And maybe some of them are, and, and I use this phrase, less popular than some others, but they're certainly no less talented. Oh, yeah. You know? no, everybody, everybody in your project are so talented. I mean, yeah. they're, they're quality musicians, you know. And they bring, they put their heart and soul in it. It's not to make a penny. Uh, nobody phones it in. Their words are deep and open ended. Uh, you know, fame doesn't always equal talent, and uh, talent doesn't always equal fame. You know, right. in this business, but right. that's why I probably put the lyrics and everything. I mean, they write great. To me, words have always been really important. You know. Uh, Songs that you can kind of put yourself in, like, oh, I know what they're saying. Even if it's totally wrong, even if that's not what the singer wrote about, if you, know, you can put yourself into that. I got Patrick on the, I'm going to put him in. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so join there he is. Now. It's Patrick Mata. Patrick. You're coming. Uh, wow. All there right. <laughs> what a good looking gentleman. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, thank you. Welcome to the show. I got yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah, the, it. The legendary founder of Community FK. Yeah, well, welcome to the show, Patrick. Patrick Mata. Thank you so much. Yeah, so Michael and I were just talking just in the beginning about, about the album and about all his Yeah, it's a wonderful album. Family. I just played it the other day uh, in the car, driving around. I was playing it full blast. And it's the only way to listen to it is maximum volume, you know. And it's a wonderful yeah. record. And Patrick is in is in the new addition to the family, right, Michael? I'm honored. Believe me, I have no idea how honored I am. Yeah, I mean, uh, Patrick and I, we both, I mean, he was actually out in California. I think you were born here, right? I'm sorry? Are you a California native? I'm a California boy. Yeah. So we, we moved out here with human drama in late 85, and there was... Uh, Patrick and I and Johnny just had like a nice dinner when he was out here. And we talked about those times, like just how great music was. You know, there was that great dark wave goth scene around Scream and Vinyl Fetish and all that. But at the same time, there was the hair metal stuff on the Sunset Strip. And it was just and people coexisted. And it was just a great time in music. And we have had done some shows with Community FK and Human Drama. We were both on the Geffen Scream compilation. Uh, and so we knew each other and just, you know, you blink and 20 something years uh, went by. And then out of the blue, I got a message from Patrick on uh, like Facebook Messenger saying, hey, uh, Love to be part of Beauty and Chaos. And it was like, wow, okay. But we were right in the middle of doing Behind the Veil. Uh, so it was like, you know, that was I, my little box I put that record in was all females. Uh, but then, then the time came around and uh, I reached out again. Hey, we're doing this uh, new record. Do you want to be part? And uh, I think it's one of the standout tracks on it. And God, we sure had a great time doing great that. Video. Oh, yeah. That was so much fun. Uh, and the video, the video was we incredible. We were just talking about this amazing, your amazing video. Yeah, I love that video. Um, it's funny too. I last time I checked, there's over two thousand views, yeah. and it hasn't been out really that long, you know. So it's becoming popular, I think. Yeah, it, it's kind of getting its legs, which, uh, you know, it it is. I think in one thing I described it as uh, our DeLorean. Back to the Future, throwback to like 86. And it, it is when we sat down, the idea was kind of going back to that, you know, what I felt was a golden era of music here in Los Angeles. So we kind of just recreated this cool, you know, dark underground, like bat cave type of club and just had fun, you know, put on makeup, teased up our hair 
uh, had some audience and just we just had a, like a really good time doing it. And yeah. it was, it was such like a, being at a gig. Yeah, it, it was, was. Like a gig. You know, we yeah. had the, the monitors were blasting and, uh, you know, for us, with Beauty and Chaos being that there is no live show or live band yet, it's always important to me to make it a completely different look than its predecessor. And this is a completely different look and feel from Diving for Pearls. And, uh, you know, I always Who did the lighting. Who did the lighting on that, Michael? On Diving for Pearls? Uh, both videos. Who did the lighting? Because the lighting really is... Uh... And that's, that's our friend anthony scum oh, uh, yeah, always yeah. comes to the video and help and yeah they yeah. we just a small good team job. that just have a really good time doing doing this and uh that's the important thing is we had had fun making it and uh yeah yeah i think it shows i think it shows that it's an honest video and if anybody oh, yeah. looks at it and goes oh that's that's dated yeah it's dated and don't you wish you would have been been there i think it's timeless time. i think yeah. it's timeless yeah it's timeless it's, it's, uh, it's you watch they'll be watching this video later on even you know yeah so you can can you tell me a little bit about how you collaborated together with holy ground you know with that song and just putting it all together and just what was the process go ahead michael it, it's it's the same that we've been doing and i think we've gotten better at it over the albums that it's you know to be clear the singers and patrick definitely we you know what was one of the hit when we first started talking you go so i i write the the lyrics and the melody and it's like yeah absolutely michael and i really write the music and to me it's not really a song until the singer gets it and then they turn it in and it comes back and it has a name and it has a melody so this piece of music now is is a song and uh patrick sent it back and uh as soon as i heard the bridge uh you know it just got to the murder ballads playing in the background it's like wow i'm this telling you those chords right there yeah. those chords were it, asking for had to be it just had to be right they had to be right and I, I just remember i tried uh one attempt and it wasn't quite there and i appreciate your transparency and transparency michael always the best way you know and uh it made me sharpen sharpen up even more and i thought this has to be has to be fantastic and it has to be simple too and so i just i just that just bam just came out and i just went that's it it's got to be it this is i'm getting chills thinking about it right now yeah it, it's and it's all it's a joy for me is that you know we do this piece of music and i get like people go you just have this great knack of finding the right singer and it's like i don't know if it's a, a gift or a knack or if it's divine intervention but that must the, be right. joy, the <laughs> joy for me is that when like patrick go hey man check your email you know i sent you sent it to you there's that anticipation and that i can't wait to hear this and then it's like christmas morning it's like bam there's this thing which is again just music which could have just been an underscore to something in a film now is a song and you know We've been so blessed throughout this beauty and chaos yeah. journey that it always come, you know, it always comes back and it's it's great. And I, I mean that as a fan of the singer, not blowing our own horn. I, I dread, I hope I never have the day that we send a piece of music and something comes back and it's like, ugh, you know, because I do value people's time. I think when a singer puts lyrics and and melody and stuff like that it's got to come from their heart and that is time uh but yeah we've just been blessed and when this song came back it was great i i started going i think we started talking about doing this as a video before it was even finished and mixed it just i knew what kind of video patrick and i could do together and uh, oh, yeah i think the video is just a testament to that yeah great video patrick Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank but you. Michael and I were just talking about that, you know. She was yeah. asking me about the makeup. That seems yeah, to be the, the, the eyes was, seem to be was, thing. <laughs> it was mesmerizing. Well, well, you know, when I'm looking at your eyes, I'm like, wow, did he <laughs> so amazing. I mean, you got beautiful eyes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, here's the thing. Um without giving too much away, um when he had said that this song he felt strong enough to have a video for. I, I mean, I was in awe. I was like, I couldn't believe it. You know, that's like, wow. 
it is that good you know it's a good song it is and um so i thought well again as as when he invited me to add the vocals and lyrics to his his track i said i have to bring it man this is this is it there's that moment where everything has to be perfect and it has to you have to bring it i mean you have to you can't mess around you know and so i thought well, what am i going to bring to this video uh as the message trying to be conveyed that will that will mean something and uh so if you remember the video for something inside me has died the community of case video um that angel character he's kind of a harbinger in that instance in this one it's kind of part b of that character where I thought in order to, without using props and all that crap, to make this this person, this character sing, singing the song, you have to bring something that's memorable and otherworldly. And I thought, well, I'm not going to put wings on. I'm not going to do all that. It's too obvious. So I thought, well, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this makes it look otherworldly. It, it, it's like you're saying, everyone's kind of tripping on it, you know, but it worked. It worked. I wasn't sure how it was going to be and how Michael was going to think about it. Uh, I just brought it to the table and I said, this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I'm trying to convey. And I'm going to, I'm going to own it and I'm going to stand by it, you know, and here enough, here we are, you know, it stands and, out. And Michael was saying you had your eyes closed. Yeah. I just closed the entire time, the entire. Oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> when he told me that, cause Amazing. I walked in and he was having, uh, we had uh, a friend of ours was doing the makeup. Fantastic. Yeah, Donya. Uh, Danya. And, uh, I thought he was going to just have it where his eyes opened and closed. And then later when he kind of revealed it, I went, I wish I'm so glad he didn't step off the stage. But, <laughs> but it, it, funny. it's great. I mean, it's like every, really all I ever send any, any singer, I, I sent them, I think I sent Patrick the name of the album. And I think, uh, I, a friend that's in Germany, an artist, Marin, who did the cover, which I think is back there. Yeah, it was fun. like, that's all it is. It's here's the name of the album. Here's here's the here's the cover. And I leave it to the singer to take as little or as none of that as they wanted. And it was kind of several of the songs kind of utilize the the phrase angel in in different ways. But it it I think the cover the title and everything, it keeps this like common thread, you know, uh, yeah. several of us on this record have a similar faith, but we're certainly not putting, pushing that down anyone's throat. So wh mm -hmm. whatever your angel is, whether it's a guardian angel, a divine angel, a, a, a demon, or, I mean, whatever it is, I, I think as a world right now, we certainly can use, it's, the world's pretty screwed up right now yeah, there's a cosmic battle going on yeah to be we, we certainly can use angels whatever that is to you to you and i think it just kind of became a common thread uh throughout mm -hmm. the album but again i'm real right. i i love our singers lyrics and i have from the first record no one has ever written a rock and roll party song uh mm -hmm. hopefully the music never sends anybody to that past they're always something deeper and i think it is that usually the people we find have similar influences you know i think patrick and i we can sit there and go bowie mark bowie oh, yeah. you know oh, yeah we have a lot in common man Roz williams we can grab grab these people that are artists not just you know a singer i, I wanted to be in the rock a singer in the rock band because i want to get girls you know, has a little bit to do with it back in the beginning, but <laughs> but now as you mature, it's got it's got to become something uh, deeper to be to be real and not just be. I mean, to be honest uh, and not just I'm scribbling rhymes down, and that's why yeah. from one the lyrics have been proudly put in every uh, album. Yeah. So speaking of angels, right? I know you mentioned something about halos. And the connection with the song. Can you talk about that a little bit? I I, uh, want, go I, ahead, I, Michael. I wanted to do something and I kind of yeah. wanted to do this on the first record and time constraints since that record turned into a double album. It just wasn't able to happen. And I wanted to, again, challenge people, listeners, and maybe cut out the ones that are just going, I just want to skip through to hear, you know, 
the, the song I like the video of. Oh, let me hear what the guitar solo sounds like. I wanted to, I mean, kind of weed out those casual listeners in a way and and put it to someone that maybe would listen to disintegration top to bottom or dark side of the moon or top to bottom. I wanted to give it this thread. And uh, I just thought that that worked. You know, they're all uh, different. They kind of, some of them evolve. Some of them are repetitive. And it, it you know, probably some people go, oh, it's a bit self-indulgent. I mean, maybe a little bit. It's something I wanted to do. And I think it does tie the songs together. When you have eight different singers, I think we've done a great job on all the records not making this sound like a, oh, here's a somebody's playlist or a compilation. It it does sound like all these people should be to, together. You know, I mean, God, you look at that first record and go, we have Robin Zander and Ice T. How would those people ever sit at a dinner table together, you know, and, and converse? But somehow we made it work on that record. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the, the it was ju it's just threads, you know, to kind of make this a experience as opposed to a collection of songs, you know. It and flows. It's probably, it flows really well. Yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of my reaction to the, the TikTok world of, you know, 30, 30 second time frame it's like you know what if you don't have the time frame to listen to the song here's this here's 75 minutes of it you know and i guess there's a little bit of a not anger just a little bit fed up the way people view music and uh, the art of making music today so i just went screw it we'll challenge them more there was for a fleeting second i wanted to put it on the cd as one track to where they couldn't even skip through things but uh no, that's you know, great. i'm ha i'm happy we did it i think uh i don't yeah. think any of the the artists on the record even heard it until they got the cd and i think all of them felt that was a cool lead in and i don't think anyone felt that these and certainly not our intention to take away from their song because if right. you look at the cd they're not even named it just says Track one, present tense. Track three, you know, the devil you know is like we we just even left it as a blank. Uh, but I'm happy we did it. Yeah, yeah. So I know that another addition to the Beauty and Chaos family is Leo Lugansky from he, the, the lead singer for the um, Strange Love, the tribute band to Depeche Mode, which is just, he's an amazing singer. Yeah, he's, you know that. what? There's, there's probably some people that go, really, a Depeche Mode cover singer? I'm like, screw that. That oh, kid's, he, he's that a, he's kid's a, talented. Very talented, and yeah. I think we all have to do something as a day job. None of us are rowing in money from making music. That's what Leo does. But Leo's talented. I mean, way he on does. That. I mean, yeah. he's constantly singing. If you, if you look at it, if you find him on Instagram. Yeah. And, and that's a very different, you know, he's kind of sandwiched on a record with some, the big booming baritones of William Faith and Wayne Hussey and Ashton and Julian. They're all those big deep singers. Patrick has uh, more of a diverse, you know, range, but Leo is so like odd, odd out when you, when you're talking about the big goth voices and uh, his track holds up, you know, I mean, I think that kid, could be a star he's got a lot of talent and, I mean, and uh, he, he rocks the dance floor you know the, the, with a strange love <laughs> yeah we have a video coming and he holds his own not being that character you know uh so i will go to my grave going like the kid's got talent i mean i think everybody on that record on this record is unique and i always ask that people please dive in to what they do outside of this. I mean, Patrick's new project is, is fantastic. You know, I mean, go back to Thanks, Community Michael. K. That, I mean, that there's a lot of bands that do cite Patrick and Community FK as a, an influence. And, you know, when we came out here, it was like, wow, they're, they're setting the bar high. And they were getting airplay on 
MTV is 120 minutes and stuff like that. So uh, there's lots of gems in there, but uh, I'd love for Patrick to talk about his his new project also. Yeah, yeah. I know you got a new, um, I knew you had a debut solo back in 2022 with Mad Men, right, Patrick? Yeah, that was the uh, first time I ever really released anything as a solo artist. And it was, uh, it's actually, the song is uh, called Mad Men. Mad, yeah, Mad Men. Have you ever heard that, Michael? No. About that song, Mad Men? Because you're you're like me, you're full on UK glam boy, glitter boy. I was fully that was my punk rock when I was a younger younger man. It was the glam scene in England, and uh, uh, the song Mad Men was written by Mark Bolin and David Bowie, and it was a throwaway and had never been recorded except in a hotel wow. room on some cassette tape or some reel to reel tape, and has never been released. And I happened to have had a a, a copy of it at one time. I thought, oh, I want to cover this song. It's so obscure that no one realizes that it's a Bowie Bowen. Wow. But I did it electronically. Yeah, yeah. and so, you, you did a, a, a different version of it, too. Yeah, I did another version of it. Yeah, there's there's one with guitars and one without guitars. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm glad you, you heard that. I love that song. I'll send it to you, Michael. I don't think you've Yeah, I really would love to hear that. It, it's kind of, you know, I mean getting to know Patrick again and we drove around a lot and we had dinner and we definitely the Bowie, uh, but Mark Bowen Slade, uh, that, that UK, uh, period of music, uh, even the producers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. uh, we, we all knew together and I kind of had the same experience when we, when I worked with Wayne Hussey out, here, you know, I became great friends with Wayne and realizing, uh, that when we did 20th Century Boy, the version with Roland, like we were just sitting there and both of us were kind of gushing to Roland, like just like how big of an influence his father was on us. And I didn't realize that Wayne said, I picked up guitar in the UK, bought a cheap little guitar when I when I first heard, you know, your dad play. And it's just like we did that video and and have Roland who was a little uneasy at first. Like, I, I think, I don't think he knew what to make of it. And then had a blast doing the video. And, and at the end of it, he goes, you know what? I think my dad would have really, really enjoyed seeing us do this. And it was like, wow, wow that yeah. was, that was uh, touching, man. Was That's yeah. heavy. That was That's so heavy. amazing. I mean, there's so many, I mean, gosh, Michael, you, you're, you're, so, you're just so amazing with everything that you're doing. You know, I, I, even, I even have that other version I guess you can sing along with it, you know. You you had some some tracks that you can sing along with. It's just like oh yeah, we did the uh, the karaoke. Uh, yeah, song. yeah, that is so cool. I don't. It was. Yeah, uh, I, I think. <laughs> yeah, it was like we had. Uh, we did when we mastered it. They said, "Hey, do you want instrumental mixes?" And it's like uh, I have it. Yes. <laughs> I could. Yeah, you it. can put it in your car, and you can. Uh, you can be that, but it it's it's like when you said that. From 2018, it 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 took me because we're we're editing a video right now for Made of Rain. Uh, oh, I love. I mean, it was when Ashton yeah. sent that back. I always look at when we make these albums as the needle drop song, and how it the needle should go off the record. And as soon as Ashton sent that, I went, "That's the closing track. That's how I want this record." That's really good. That's a beautiful to wrap, to wrap up. And we shot a really great video of it and uh, re really looking forward uh, to that that coming out. Uh, but yeah, a very important song. But I was starting, I was talking with, you know, Shauna going, so when are you going to put this stuff out? And I was trying to to do a little, oh, well, this here, here, here. And I and I went, uh, I looked at to see when Storm was released. And I looked back on YouTube to see when we uploaded it. It was September 10th, 2018. And it, it was a little bit of a mind bend going, wow, it doesn't feel like six years. Uh, no, it went by so quickly. But then I went, you know what, how it would be cool to me. And I'm sure to Ashton too, which we're going to do, we're going to put out the made of rain video on September 10th, like the six, six years of oh. doing it because that song storm it was so important uh to me the confidence to do this and you know and the lyric there is always a light that he wrote i think is something if there is a common phrase that i'd love for us to be remembered by and a thread that runs through every album it's that and 
the first two songs we did with 20th Century Boy with Al, like when I'm talking about us creating it. So that was a cover song. So I was like, okay, everybody can kind of do a cover song. I think we did a, a cool different version. And then we did Drifting, which was a song I had already had written. And I did in a band that never did anything, but I always thought it was a great song. And then Robin came in and, and kind of really helped arrange it. So those two were kind of easy uh, to go, okay, we have one and two. And then the first really song that I had, had picked up the guitar and started from nothing turned out to be Storm. And I still remember going walking in my backyard, again, getting one of those texts. Hey, man, check your check your email. I'm working on I think I have something good and putting a little pair of headphones in and walking my yard and, and just hearing what Ashton did with that. It was like, oh, yeah. Yes. I this, it, it gives me goosebumps, you know. Yeah, I I knew then I went, okay, this record could actually happen. So it was such a jolt of confidence that that song gave. And again, that that lyric, there is always a light to me, run is if if there's a, a headstone for BIC, there is always a light. I think that is a lyric that will run always be constant in that. And uh so yeah, uh proud of uh what we've created here and uh so Pat Patrick, you have you uh sent Anna the new uh stuff you did? Yeah, no, you I haven't, it no. me. yeah, I'd love to play it. Oh, okay. Thank so you, is there yeah, anything I... like um are you doing are you working on anything brand new, Patrick? Well, um for the last four years, uh since twenty twenty, uh Dave Roberts from Sex Gang Children. You know, sex gang children, yeah. Yeah, uh, he's the bass player, composer, main guy, one of the main guys. Anyway, um, he and I had started talking. We've known each other for a long time, probably as long as I've known Michael. And uh, we said, why don't we try, you know, putting some music together, see what happens. So we did, and we ended up with uh, also a double album, um, and it's called the the Black and White album, and it came out July first. So I'll send you, I'll send that to you, and. Uh, we put out a bunch of singles and things like that. Uh, we're, on, we're on all the musical aggregates, like you know Spotify and Apple and all that stuff. Uh, but we we worked on that for four years, and we finally said, "Well, we got to put this out." I mean, this is crazy not putting it out. So we finally got it together and and put it out. Um, we're working on a on a second another album. Uh, we have also rarities, uh, different mixes, and we have a dub album also, a dub version of the of that stuff. And also, I still have Community FK. I'm just kind of on the side burner right now. Uh, I want to write a song with Michael for Community FK. He'd be up for that. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, Where's Michael? Also, up to that? Absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah, great. That's amazing. I'm so glad that, you know, you're, you guys are still doing this. I mean, this is the music I grew up listening to, you know? And, uh, and there's, there's nothing like it, really. I, mean, I, I think I, I really hope... Uh, I don't think Community FK ever went away, but it just in the fog of everything new that nothing I think is going to be have any lasting uh, appeal. I think having some people go back to to music of that time and hearing uh, Community FK, and I think you listen to that, I think you'll go, wow, they influenced. Of course, we all were influenced by something else. Well, but, yeah, you inspired but, people too yeah. with human drama and your time yeah. in that band. And but I, I think people going back to Community FK, I think they'll they'll start hearing, oh, I see where this band got stuff from. They must have listened to Community FK and things like that. And so I, I think I'm hoping again, I always want, I always appreciate what the singers bring to Beauty and Chaos because it couldn't be done without them. And I always they bring a vibe to you. Yeah. I you always know, hope all, this, all together. It's great. Yeah, but I do hope the repay from Beauty and Chaos is that people will start, maybe if they never heard of Community FK, let's see what this is about. Or it's like, oh, I remember that band. Oh, he's still doing it. And I, I hope they dig into to that, everything Patrick's done. I hope they, they'll go down the path of Cynthia, uh, Isabella with her Lost Gems and Silence in the Snow. I mean, Cat Leone, she was, I mean, Stranger is one of my favorite songs we've done. And Holy Wars is, I mean, that girl is relentless in her work ethic. And they're moving up the uh, 
the roster on those fest on the big festivals and stuff. And uh, I mean, William and Sarah, I mean, William Faith is uh, he come he's comes from the, the same cloth as Patrick and I, you know, and his mm -hmm. belt yeah. in to get is uh, is fantastic. Uh, you know, so it, it's it's kind of nice that I was able, on this record. It's like pull together some old friends you know, with Patrick and William, guys that we probably were in Scream and Club With No Name and Helter Skelter and all those L.A. clubs together. And now kind of being able to be on the same record together is pretty cool. It is. Yeah, and, it and, really and, is. you know, I, I still have those CDs, you know, where Community FK is in, you know. Oh, wow. You know, going oh, wow. back and, you know, these, I, I don't I don't know if they make them anymore, but, you know, these big albums that are this, this size and then you open it up and, you know. Um, oh yeah, the gatefolds. Yeah, See, Michael. Michael and I were talking about this. He brings he brings it up sometimes. How uh, someone who loves music as much as say he does and I do and you do and people like us, uh, we remember when it was an experience. You saved your money. You went down to the record store. If you were lucky, the record store had a listening booth in it, mm -hmm. and you just put on and all this. I remember the first time I I heard uh, Ziggy and heard the slider. And it was the same day, and it was 1972, and I was in a, a record store up in Northern California, and I just put them on, and I was just so much music going on at that time. You know, all these great bands. Well, now, my thing is I'd love to do some vinyl myself, because gatefolds, opening them up, all that information inside, even in the inner sleeves, you know, that stuff is a lost art. I know. And I know Mike was really into that, too. Um, so if you yeah, do I mean that kind of packaging... I think the fan would be even more turned on to what you're doing. I mean, we this the CD has there a complete twelve page booklet. Um, yeah, that's why that's why I'm saying this because Michael is doing it. See, I'm it talking yes, about exactly. Albums, you know the the hex files. I don't know. I'm trying to remember Mick Mercer. I think. Um, yeah, 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 Mick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I still have that. I I save them. I you know how people just sell them or whatever they would get. Well, I save mine too. I, yeah, I, I keep mine. I keep mine. Me too. I keep Me too. My vinyl. I'm I'm a vinyl collector. Um, is, is Patrick was problem. kind enough to get the uh, uh, holy ground over the to Mick. I I have I did I don't oh. really know him at all, and uh, yeah, he's the champion of the song, which is which yeah. is cool. I mean, the guy's a legend in this world. Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely. Dig this. Remember, if I may elaborate, Michael. Um, that song when I gave it to Mick, as soon as he heard it, he emailed me back and goes, "It's fantastic," you know. And so he played it on his show. I think it was a third song in. And it won the listeners' poll for that particular program, that broadcast. It won the listeners' votes, saying, "Which is cool, he only does that at the end of every one of his broadcasts." What's their favorite track? And everyone went holy ground. I mean, which was cool because I remember seeing insane. it like March Violets, their new stuff, and so oh, yeah, their their new single, pretty heavy hitters on there. It's a great but... song too. Their song, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm actually interviewing the the March Violets. I'm really excited for that. I love. I mean, you guys are like the legends. You know, I mean, it's so Thank important. Thank you to preserve that and you know just you guys are all like the rock and rollers you know <laughs> I, mean, I mean i think we're all it's built on the shoulders of what was before us uh which you know i mean i think our influence we wear it on our sleeve you know you can yeah. i think you hear my guitar playing i i would think you'd hear mick ronson johnny thunders and and you know kevin shields like things like that it's like that's what i grew up playing i'm not gonna i'm not gonna pretend to be something i'm not but it i mean it it's taught i i love the idea of vinyl uh i think again that may to me somebody that is going to have vinyl i think is going to have a stereo so they're going to put it on something and have speakers mm -hmm. spread and kind of hear it more so than oh I'm listening to it on my iPhone with a a, a, a speaker the size of a, a pinhead. Yeah, you it's know? too so flat. I think, yeah, I think they're they're investing. They're going to be a more critical listener, uh, and they they care. It's not just background, but I mean it, it's it's difficult. It is. You know, it's hard to to talk about this without going. I I never want to be a car salesman like buy our vinyl, buy this. I mean, I I like to, to put it as with everybody. If you like a band and they make vinyl or CD, if you can afford it, buy it. If you want to hear them do do that again, you know, if you if you have something, if, you know, some people just don't have a, a a record player or CD player anymore. I guess I get that, but. 
I mean, it's expensive to They're do it. Out. It's also expensive for people to buy it and, and ship it. You can spend $20 on an album. It, somebody buys it from you and it's $25 to ship it. I mean, I get I get in today's world, almost dumping $50 on eight songs is is a commitment. It's not, it's some people it's impossible to. And I, I get why they go, oh, well, streaming, I just put it on that it's on there and i don't know something about that like when patrick says going to that record store we didn't have that ability to just go here's every album every song everything right there that that they missed that joy i remember yeah. holding queen one discovery and, queen one and queen two in my hand going oh, i love them only have five dollars which one should I get, yeah. you know, and yeah. that's etched in my brain. It's not going to be etched in my brain. Oh, I go to Spotify and I'm able to find some new, you know, remaster of, you know, 20th century boy. It's like, those are the memories. And, uh, you yeah, know, living with the record. Yeah. You know? I guess we sound like, with it. Yeah. yeah, that's where you got your information, but I guess we sound like old guys sitting on the porch. Get off my lawn, kid. <laughs> Get off my lawn and go and listen to those records, damn yeah. you! You know, I, you know, Michael, I love the album cover too, and I know that's by Marin. Uh, can, can you talk a little bit about her, about this? I just got, you know, I met her just on a mission fan page. She once, I think, she had written because she loves the mission and uh, had sent a picture of her with Wayne, and uh, she had sent a, a drawing of of this uh, of what became the cover, kind of in a in a sketch format, like it was getting there. And we have lots of angels around our house and our garden and everything. And uh, it, it just seemed right. And, you know, she'd send pictures as it was being done and started to add the color. And then just as I, I could start seeing it, to me, it looked like the angel kind of moving or dancing or looking over you. And I just went, I saw that, I went, that's the cover. The title went Dancing with Angels. And I don't usually change after I kind of make that decision, you know. And I think we've had really good covers. They're 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 thought yeah. out, you know. Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah. And uh this was no different. And then uh I I didn't know what I was doing on the back, and then out of the blue, she sent kind of the rear picture of it. And I went, that's that's really cool. That reminds me of a a 70s album that has the front and the back and it, it just worked and i really appreciate that she did that and it it is a it is something that i think tied the records the the, the album together and uh yeah it you know what? makes it you know again those are the details that mm. i think are really important that i think a lot of people miss but mm. we toil over the running order no, I, I mean, you know, for, you know, all of your albums, Michael has always had a, a very beautiful cover. And I, I knew when I'm going to do this interview with you, with you guys, I knew it was going to be very detailed because that's what you are. You really focus on your work. I mean, it's really quality, You're a true artist. quality, you singer, really quality artist. Yeah. True artists. Yeah. And you, like I was telling Michael earlier, you got the best singers. I mean, these are quality singers, you know, they're not just somebody like, I mean, they're, no, he, these are these are true artists and again when i went back maybe that first album it's like you know cheap cheap trick having robin yeah they've sold platinum but no less no more or less talented than cynthia and isabella or pinky terzo or some of these artists that people go i don't I haven't heard of them but oh they're great wow they have a great voice and that's uh Again, talent doesn't always equal fame and fame doesn't always equal talent. And I I knew from the beginning that, I mean, we came out the gate and I'm glad it worked this way because if, if Beauty and Chaos would have just went down the path of who who I can get, like, can you top that? Can you get Robert Smith on the next record? If it just became that those names would have overshadowed it and would have ran out real quick. This could have been a one and done rep, one and done thing with beauty and chaos, but instead it blossomed into a great relationship meeting Ashton meeting mm -hmm. Wayne, mm -hmm. yeah. and that turned into 
you and know, so they're all and connected, I, right? to my and friend so Stephen Seabold, who's going to do a remix again, who knows Patrick. And it, it just becomes in uh, in a great way, incestuous, incestuous, uh, <laughs> a strange pedophile way of today's world. But uh, <laughs> it, it just uh, it just works. And uh, that's that's been a, a real joy is finding those gems like. Let me say this, Michael, about you, if I may. You are a wizard in the sense that you're you're bringing the chem you're making the chemistry by putting all of us on this piece of work of yours. All of us from different frames of references, all of us with different uh, like upbringing uh, um, influences from their whatever their like read literature or what have you. You know, mm -hmm. you you were the wizard. You're the chemist. I mean, you bring everybody, everybody together. together. You bring everybody together, Michael. Yeah, I, I thing, appreciate yeah. that. That and, and everybody I, is connecting with each other. You know, you're connecting them. You're giving yeah. them the opportunity. It's all good vibes, you know. It's all good. Yeah, magic. I think they've become like some of the artists have become become friends by being on this together and talked about working with each other, which is a great. It 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 is a thing of going. You know, I don't just use the phrase "big family" as oh, that's a clever little title. It is a family and it it does include, like I told you before Patrick got on, Anna, that you, Ryan from Jammerzine, Iker from Regen, I, I know I'm going to miss some people that I, I'm sorry, uh, that have been, that have got this from day one uh, and actually don't just regurgitate the press release, actually listen to the songs good or bad like i love this song this song's eh. you know i'd rather that than just the uh, beauty and chaos la based goth super group like just you know somebody just typing it and redoing it. i love i love as much as we want to be old school musicians i love the old school journalism of people like as a kid i used to live and die what lester bangs wrote or cream magazine oh, yeah. or stuff oh, yeah. like that you, you kind of end man. up up tr trusting them uh uh tina from american songwriter i just did it hasn't come out yet but it's like it's a there's some people it's a joy to talk to because they really they come from and they do notice the details you know and mm. that's as an artist i mean beyond you listening to it going i'm happy with what i did having a select few other people actually notice the details Mm -hmm. that that's a beautiful thing i'll I'll take that more than the fame or w whatever other trappings come with this H having people go this this thing that you've completed is is a is a actual work work of art and i, I mean that not being you know blowing our own horn but it, it is a piece of art at least to all of us from the title the cover what the record looks like. Oh, all those are details that I think are actually lost when you go, oh, just put it on streaming. You know, then it's, I, I don't want our music to be zeros and ones. You know, it's, I'd rather have the expense of printing stuff and maybe not selling everything that you make than going, it doesn't exist on that. It's, it's in the ether. And if the, if, you know, somebody decides one day to pull the, uh, the plug of the internet, which, at some days I go, that might not actually be a bad thing. Uh, it, yeah. it all goes away, you know? So I'd rather have <laughs> it documented. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I have so much respect for you, Michael, and not just as a, as a rock star, as a musician, but you are a, a husband, a father, an amazing dad, you know? I mean, I see. He is. He is. Yeah, no, wait, I mean, you probably I'm, have an idea, but he is. <laughs> we try, you know? I mean, I'm blessed that, you know, my wife and my kids uh, support what I do. You know, I think they, I think they're in a way, I know they, I know they're proud. It's better than, you know, some oh, dads yeah. go play golf. I go to the, I studio. mean, you're probably the coolest dad, to be honest. You know, you got this, I don't, you, you know, you, let me you get run, them on here and see what. <laughs> no, and you run this guitar company, you know, the president I, I of think, guitar. I, I mean, think I they get it now. I mean, they were a little like, I hope, you know, one day, and I think now they do. I mean, I love as much as I love this cover. Uh, I think still my favorite, and it's going to be from a personal standpoint, is finding beauty and chaos. Having because at that point, that was 
my beauty and my wife's beauty was our daughters and having them on that cover that was the 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 fitting launch of this but yeah Is that i mean the first album michael yeah and it's okay, Nicole and that, Sophia are, are on the cover of it but you know having tish involved in it i mean she's done two fantastic songs in this i mean look up in the look up uh, video i think that was the, the first video that you can actually tell this was extremely fun i mean we were i dove into the drum set and rose on through the drums over and we just we had a, a blast and you know and i think one of the deepest songs uh which doesn't get a, a ton of notoriety and it, it was the perfect opening track from behind for behind the veil was afterlife i mean i just felt that it's the only video that oh, oh it's just tish in it there's no band there's no, it's just like this mini film. And that that was, you know, I respect that she carried that. And uh, yeah, no, he's that is a, a gorgeous he, song. But yeah. having your family involved and Patrick's uh, wife's involved with him and stuff. I mean, it certainly makes doing this easier when your family understands it. And it's not like, I don't understand where you go and why you're there for for 16 hours and why what's this charge for vinyl pressing i mean it makes it it makes or it someone easy. saying don't go to rehearsal what do you do you know come on you know it's like yeah stay here and what sit do I do, man? And watch <laughs> tv and, you know i mean that that you yeah, know we're blessed yeah Very blessed. definitely blessed in that point and you know yeah, you, uh, yeah, but I, I appreciate you saying that about uh, parents. That's at the end of the day, that's the most important thing to me. I was blessed with fantastic parents, and anything I do right, I, uh, I, it's it's from them, Bonnie and Johnny. Right on, Amen. God bless them. Yeah. So this album, I know, is out now. It's a it's, it's the fourth album, Dancing with Angels, on on the thirty three point three Music Collective. Yeah, it's been out uh, what close close to two weeks now. Uh, the CDs are all shipping. Uh, the vinyl should be landing here and in uh, England later this week. It just takes double the time to press vinyl uh, than it does to press uh, to do CDs. Uh, I'm really the the plan i'm i hope i hope i have a great surprise when i open the vinyl we did some stuff that kind of follow Mar, marin's colors that mm. should have somewhat of an angel wing pattern when they spin the colors on the vinyl oh, that, cool. oh wow man uh for mm. that you know again it's trying to make it make it something uh i think we it's all heart. Uh, you know i went i go back as a kid going Billion Dollar Babies opened up. It was a wallet. School's out, turning into a desk. It was like, it. I don't, to me, it's the little things. You know, one. Do you remember Michael? Do you remember? Do you remember uh, some of the Alice Cooper? Uh, I think it was that album, or or um, Mus Muscle of Love. I can't remember what album it was. Had a pair of plastic underpants around. That the, was the, School's the, Out. It was in out, right. Yeah. The panties. Uh, yeah, that was. And Muscle of Love idea, was yeah. a a condom box I yeah mean, that's right yeah i mean granted you their bands were pushing the envelope there but it is the deal. one the record the music has to stand yeah. but it, it, the the other stuff i think is is just ads it just makes it like hey this isn't background no don't just have this playing in another room while you have the tv on it's it's set. And I've, I, I think I wrote inside of Dancing with Angels that I implore people to give this one uninterrupted listen. I think all I can speak for the artists on this one time, just put it on, hear present tense going into that first little interlude and hearing it go into the devil you know. And that goes into this really cool, uh, if, I, if I have the halos correct, and this is the one that Whitney does some gorgeous vocalizing on it it almost sounds like it could be on peter gabriel so and it and it's kind of morphs out of that into diving for pearls and it's just this like kind of journey i mean i hope it keeps people to sit there and go wait no i don't want to get up right now i don't want to skip skip ah, i don't like this one skip uh which again is i think why I think, think they, all, they all sound good. You don't want to skip. <laughs> I, I hope. I, I know today's world, uh, so, who's, 
who's got time for that? But I think we all used to make time. I would come home. And I think I always found that if somebody put a vinyl, a record on, they're probably going to listen to those four or five songs. So I think at least you get that commitment from someone like, okay, if they drop the needle here, rarely does someone go up and go, I'm going to move it to the last song. You mm -hmm. kind of get them captive for that. And no. uh, I remember me back in the day when I first got the album, I would play that. That's the whole purpose of the album is to play from the beginning to the end. Remember how it just goes all the way and then when it gets to the end, it's right. Yeah, you find, I think you find the deep cuts. And I and I think some of the stuff on, like, uh, I didn't want, I knew Holy Ground because of Patrick's name and reputation and that it was the video that came out right before was going to get its attention. I was worried, I because I think Hollow is a beautiful song. And I'm, again, thinking in terms of the vinyl, we had cat one female on that side, so I knew I had to put the uh, or the, I wanted to put Cynthia's song on side two. I just didn't want it to get lost as being in that track seven position or track six. Uh, so I I think we all as kids did find those deep tracks like that weren't the single, you know, that maybe you didn't like on first listen, but because you didn't have a ton of music. You list, you played that album over and over and you invested your, me, I was investing my $5 from cutting grass and cleaning yards. I had to, you know, if it was a, if I, if it was a bad record, I kind of, my week's worth of money was just up down the drain and you listened and suddenly maybe that, that song that didn't catch you at first listen, wow, that's starting to grow on me. I really like that. And that those are the, the moments I remember about music. That's just like finding that joy. Uh, and I think as you get older, it gets a little harder in today's world to find that joy. Uh, and that's what we, I think. And I think I speak for Patrick and everybody else on this. It's at this point that it's doing this is about joy and far less about being famous. And, you know, I think we've all gone today's music where you're not going to make a ton of money on it. And that doesn't really matter anymore. If you smile at what you created, I mean, I think Roseanne and I calculated, we spent about a thousand hours doing this record, you know, and yeah, I'm sure job, each, man. I'm sure each singer put in, you know, 20, 30 hours uh, on their part, uh, you know, uh, that it just turns, you know, Yeah. I oh, take my, this for granted. No, congratulations. This is a great album. Really, everything you do, and then even your, your artists, people, your family, your, your Beauty and Chaos family. Big shout out to Shauna. She's she's wonderful too. She's part of the family. <laughs> yeah, she's been uh there from the get-go. We bump heads a little bit. I think I do things a little different than some of the artists. And uh, I think maybe sometimes I drive a little crazy. But I think at the end of the day, I think she sees why I do things this way and that I don't follow necessarily the, the you know, you should release something on a Tuesday and you should post, you know, metrics do this. For, for me, I, you know, you kind of say a rule, I'm going to probably do it the opposite. You know, that's the punk rock in it where it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a rock star. This? how about <laughs> this? You know, how about our, our, our debut record's going to be a double album, you know? <laughs> oh, it is, it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to the, to the vinyl. Um, yeah. And the, the remix thing, like I, remix, I just, yeah, uh, and, and, and in the future, the live, the live shows <laughs> yeah i'm i'm again we, when we added up that we have 25 singers you know it's always to me was like i would never go oh let's do a show and ashton's got a deep voice so he can sing the wayne hussey tracks you know which yeah he could but that's cheapening what we did i would want to do this where each singer came on and they did their song you know and we presented it in a way it would it would have to be right it would have to be the right venue you know i would never do this at like the whiskey or so it would have to be something that look you do it at the fonda the part you know and you do the henry fonda theater man 
Yeah, I part of me would doesn't even want to do it in Los Angeles. Ah, you know? <laughs> like the Velvet Underground. They hated New York. Yeah, just that, just that. I'd rather do it in my home, New Orleans. I'd rather do it in. Actually, I'd, if I had pick one, it would be Mexico City. Those people love and listen to music. Yeah. Mexico oh, City, yeah. amazing. Right. But amazing town. You know, mm. We'll see. the The rest of this year is is planned with at least two more videos. Uh, the the remix record. Uh, I'll leave it at yesterday. We we have a little surprise that will go on this remix record. That's a cover song. Uh, cool. We have a an artist singing it. We went to a studio yesterday. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, wow. Just have a little little something extra. But I've heard two remixes today that that came in. That and I think Patrick and Sherry are going to do one. Yes, so. we're doing one of Holy Ground. So, so it's just okay. taking that at the idea of it's still appealing to me to hand the complete keys over to someone and go use as much as you want, use as little, make it how you hear it. It's it's still it's cool to hear how someone else interprets a song. And it just reinforces to me that a good song is a good song. If Patrick sang Holy Ground a cappella, it's a good song. If, yeah. if Julian played Kiss Me Goodbye on the piano, a good song. Uh, you know, it doesn't take the production and the big drums and the the echo and the reverb to 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 make it a song. Uh it enhances it and it makes us our vibe, but the stripped down stuff, like you said, kiss me goodbye. I'm I'm sorry, uh the long goodbye on piano. Oh yeah, yeah. One of the ones to me that came closest and maybe even topped the original version. Uh but yeah. So that's that's the rest of our year. That's a, the people are gonna see at least two videos, possibly a third, and uh, possibly the remix album in December. I'm sure I'll get told that December is not a good time to release with <laughs> Christmas and everything, but we'll see. Uh, if not December, it'll be early January. Okay. So that's beautyandchaosmusic.com. Yes. You check that out. And you, you also got some merchandise in there, I see. Yeah, we have new shirts. But Patrick, I have not forgot yours. I got. I may have Tim <laughs> send it straight to no you. Worries. Uh, no worries. Thank you. Man. Yeah. Again, I, I know I'm repeating myself by going. If you look on our web page about in, on the about tab, when you bring up this record and actually any of them, the about tab, it'll show each song. It'll have a quote from each singer. There'll be a link to their main social. And then there'll be another link that'll go to the lyrics. So I, I really implore people you know, if you haven't heard William Faith and Sarah, click that, click Bellwether Syndicate. That's a great, that's a great that'll, take you, that'll take you down the path of Faith and the Muse, his time in March Violets, his time in Christian Death. It'll just, there. there's a there's a tree that goes with all this, you know. Uh, the same thing when you see Patrick, you see the lyrics, you see his quote, an insight on the song, and then a click to go to his socials, which will lead to his mass massive catalog and each uh, artist we we spent the time because that's the important part to me that's my thank you back to these people all these amazing artists not only for their friendship but for the time they put into it and for taking our music and turning it into a song you know I can't stress that enough to me me playing guitar and making noise with echo and delay is the beginning of a paint of a painting but they're singing all they add the colors and and they title it you yeah. know that it becomes mona lisa before it was just a a woman now it's got the colors now it's got a title if that makes sense <laughs> yeah it's great it's great and i also got patrick's website uh patrick uh let me see here patrick, I can, yeah I, I, I'll, uh, I'll put the link on the bottom it's okay. Patrick. Yeah, all my stuff's there. Yeah. All my my sources are on his on the album that he had just explained. You can find it. Just go but down if, the rabbit but hole. But if you go to your website, you also have a a complete. Uh, I know you do you do your own. Um, you're also a DJ. You do you're, you're an artist. Mm -hmm. You do so many different yeah. things, and you 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 got your whole bio and your um your uh videos and all those other things as well. 
And that's yeah. P A T R I K F K twenty three dot wish site dot com. I think that's what it says right there. Yeah. I'll, I'll put a link. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I thank you for taking the time and letting us babble. And I think yeah. uh, you're, you're I mean uh, I mean I learn I learn something all the time about everything and I like I always said, you know, like Michael, there is always a light, right? So I, I think once you you kind of don't see that anymore, life gets pretty dark, you know. Uh it's true. Yeah. You know? And I, again, that that is the 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 the, ep, the epitaph. But beauty and chaos is far from done. Me and Michael are still having a blast. Uh, yeah, and and I, it's you guys that keep me here, right? Because uh, <laughs> I mean the music. I mean you guys are the music. You guys are the. Yeah, I I mean, but you know, pioneers. having people like I I think we all wish there was a thousand more like you that actually got it. I think. Yeah. I hate the, the phrase it's a dying breed, but you know, the the older we get and the further we get away from this golden time, I just don't see anybody in in 20 years going to be looking back as fondly or geez, probably it's more than that. I'm going I, I know I at 20, 30 or 35 years looking back like the way we look back at those late eighties, mid to late eighties, or even going back further to those mid seventies. I don't think people are going to look back at, Oh, 2024 and music. That was so, that was the year Taylor Swift did blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, I, it's, I, I don't see that. That's why bands like the cure and Depeche mode and, you know, will still fill a stadium, uh, you yeah. know, way past. People want to be touched. Yeah. You want to feel something. Yeah, That's well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a vampire, so I'll always be here. <laughs> right on. <laughs> it, it's a flag, but I no, think. No, it's the whole thing. In you. The whole thing is about what he does and what we do, I do, is you want to touch people. I mean, what, I am the most happiest and the most blissful when I'm singing. And when I, whether it be in the studio or especially live performance, because I love performing live. Um, but... I, I know that I'm up there for a reason and people have paid to come and see you or they paid for your record because, you know, if you're blessed, man, you're touching certain people in a certain way. And that has to be continued and even more now in this world. We need to bring the real deal to people so that they can feel hope and have some faith, you know, and, and, and power and strength. You know, you have to empower these days you have to be strong to withstand whatever they're throwing at you. So music is the greatest, the greatest message, greatest messenger. Definitely. Yeah, it it it's something that you know uh, will change your mood. A bad day, you know which record to put on. You know, you know, mm -hmm. some, you know, just finding that thing that will touch you. And uh, you know, I don't compare us to, you know, Dark Side of the Mood and Disintegration and. Uh, Ziggy Stardust and all, but those are records that I always listened straight through that my desert island thing. And I, I think as long as we keep striving to do something like that, as opposed to some throwaway batch of, uh, you know, Instagram singles and, oh, you need to write a two minute song. You got to be the chorus in the first 20 seconds or no one's going to listen. I'm like, fuck that. You know, that's not I, I don't know. That's not why we do this and that's not why any of us will do it. So mm -hmm. I'll end by saying as long as Roson and I are having a blast and we keep finding people like the eight batch of people that we have on this record, uh, you know, I was glad we were able to go back and bring three people back from before and find mm -hmm. five new people. Uh, maybe that's something that continues to work. I mean, because at, at, there's nobody that's been on a Beauty and Chaos record I would go, eh, I don't want to work with that person again. Everybody, it's just been, it's been giving. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's, that's beautiful. It's no, it's zero egos. Like no one's ever went, is my song going to be featured? Am I first cut? Am I this? Is my, it's just, no mm -hmm. one, it's not about the bullshit. It's just about, hey, this mute, this piece of track, I like it or I don't like it. And, Thankfully, most people, it spurred them to do something. And that's, 
that's that's all I can ask for. And oh, you, you picked them well, Michael. You did a good job. I hope I you keep having good... that divine in, in yeah. intervention that somebody yeah. me and you have a good intuition, <laughs> and you're you know magical, magical. You know you got the angels on your back behind you, and yeah, does. I do have that. <laughs> yeah, he does. And you guys are. Thank you so much for for joining me and doing this. And, you know, there's always a light. Remember that, Michael, there's always yes, a light. I, I've never forget. And Patrick, thanks for sticking with fighting Mr. Zoom and getting on here. I'm glad, I'm yeah, glad oh, you figure it out me. one day, Sean. <laughs> you know, you know, my, my interviews are always getting so much cooler and cooler with all the, you know, you guys, <laughs> Patrick. Well, we love you. You no, can, no, and I keep doing so what much. you thank do. You. Uh, oh, thank you so much. And I, I, I'm looking forward to your, to your music. You know, I'll, I'll send you, I'll send you an email. Yeah, send me an email. I want to send you some stuff. I think you I want to send some to Michael too. Yeah, like I said, the song. I'd love to have you write with me, Michael, for Community I, I, FK. I, I, anything, my friend. Where your That's family? That's awesome, now. man. I'm so honored. <laughs> That's killer. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll put the link to to both of your websites, and uh, thank you both for congratulations on the, on the new album, Dancing with Angels, is out now. I'll put the link on the bottom, and of course, you know, you could check out Community FK and all the stuff that Patrick is doing, his own side projects, and. So you also DJ, by the way, right? Yeah, you just ask me and we'll work it out. Oh, cool! <laughs> I love this because again, like, again, and you know, what, what Michael's been saying this whole time, uh, it's the all about the music, and and I'm a fan, just like he is. You know, we still listen to similar records that have te you know tested time, mm -hmm. and uh, so sometimes it's fun to find obscure things, and that's what I like to do. I like to play obscure things by some of these artists we grew up with. Like, yeah. yeah, you didn't know about Madman, so I brought oh, that out. So, so it's and like that. You should, you should let us know when you come into Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, yeah, I will. You get yeah, here. Yeah. Maybe we can get a, a little night together and get, like, the people like Patrick can come down. I have a guest oh, I'd love to do that, man. Uh, I would love that. Some of that, all the people that have been involved kind of just have a little a little celebration with some this and who yeah, knows maybe we can get enough of a a little a little band together to play some that'd be fun oh, yeah. versions or Are something you, but do a yeah, that'd be fun yeah you, you you have to plan it michael you know why don't you get a night together and then i'll fly down there from hawaii okay wow <laughs> i heard you you're okay I, i'm holding you to it <laughs> <laughs> I, I, now I know how Michael Rosan said when Michael turned around to me uh, and went, you should do your own album. And I went, yeah. And then I keep reminding him going, are you sorry you ever turned around and told me to do that? <laughs> and now, and now the, guy, you, man. the guy's been a, an, an angel and I, I couldn't do this without him. He's got the patience of a saint and uh, he, he cares about this and he, uh, he, ne he never lets anything just be halfway. And I think Everybody that sang on these records now feels that he's going to, he cares. No, he's going to make everyone sound, sound good. You know, he's not, an amazing producer. Not amazing. And everybody, everybody sounds good. Everybody's good. Everything. Uh, everybody that's involved in every single song. From, I know from, they're honest the album. and they're all from the heart. So that's, oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. But Anna, thank you, dear. I don't. I Very never much. take this for granted. And no, thank you. I mean everything I say. Thank you, guys. You guys are both. Thank you, Anna. And I appreciate it so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Guys. Thank you so much. Okay. We'll talk soon, guys. Thank you. All right, Michael. God bless. God bless you, man. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.